I want you to imagine traveling in a spaceship, a ship no larger than a car, the emptiness of space streaking past you. You're on a mission to conquer an entire planet single-handedly. This is the way of your kind. Arrive on a planet, slaughter all intelligent life, and sell the planet to the highest bidder. So powerful and so feared are your people that the mere mention of your species causes the smart to run or bow in submission. Only the foolish or ignorant dare oppose you. For your race, there is simply no room for the weak or timid. To say that your kind is ruthless is a vast understatement. Within your blood is the secret to your amazing strength, the secret of virtually limitless power. You see, every time you're brought to the point of death and survive, you become even more powerful. And no one to date has seen the limit to your power. In fact, it is rumored that no upper limit exists for your kind. Nothing you can't push beyond. Your target, a small rocky planet on the edge of the galaxy known as Earth. While you're on a mission to conquer this one, instead of destruction, you will grow to become Earth's greatest hero and protector. So as the hours tick by, you wait and sleep. Make no mistake, you'll need your rest. After all, you're less than five years old, just a toddler. Who are you? Well, you go by many names. Your father gave you the name Kakarot, but the people of Earth will know you as Son Goku. <laughs> yes, my friends, this is just the very, very beginning of the legend of Goku. So yeah, a little bit serious there at the beginning, but please understand the series is packed full of humor and lighthearted adventure. In fact, it really is this lightheartedness that has made Dragon Ball so great, in my humble opinion. But before we go any further, I just want to thank you for your time and attention. And if you're returning, thank you for coming back and having these nerdy conversations. See what I did there? Converse it. Anyway, we're talking about Goku the star of Dragon Ball, one of the most iconic, longest running, and most beloved animes of all time. Guys, I have such a love and deep respect for Dragon Ball. Now, the character Goku is based on Sun Wokong. Please forgive the mispronunciation. But it, it is the central character in a Chinese novel called Journey to the West. Now, Dragon Ball was written and illustrated by the amazing Akira Toriyama and Toriyama grew up loving martial arts films such as Enter the Dragon and Drunken Monkey. Akira began the Dragon Ball series inside of a weekly publication called Shonen Jump running from 1984 to 1995 with 519 chapters collected into 42 volumes and later into an anime series with over 8 100 episodes across the entire Dragon Ball franchise, and it's still running today. Yes, once you start down this path, it will absorb you. The story of Goku is honestly a simple one. He belongs to an alien race called Saiyans, and Saiyans are quite possibly the universe's greatest warriors. After landing on Earth, Goku is found by a kind elderly man known as Gohan. Goku is an angsty toddler wanting to destroy everything he comes across. And Gohan has his hands full. Well, not long after being found, Goku suffers a head injury and loses all of his memories. This turns Goku into a fun-loving and kind child. And it's the fun-loving, honest to a fault, and humble attitude that has been Goku's trademark attitude throughout the series and a trait that's gotten him into trouble on more than one occasion. Something also important to note is that Saiyans are kind of a simian race, born with a monkey-like prehensile tail. What's more is that if a Saiyan is outside during a full moon, they instantly and sometimes uncontrollably transform into a 50-story rampaging ape. This form dramatically increases their power levels but it also can sometimes cause them to black out and go into a kind of a rampage killing spree, destroying friends and foes alike. In fact, 
Gohan, Goku's adopted father, warned Goku to never look at the full moon after seeing the transformation firsthand. But Goku decides not to listen. And one night during a full moon, Goku sneaks out to look and the moon transforms him into his giant monkey form. While in this mindless state, Goku accidentally kills Gohan. Yeah, it's just extremely sad. And later on in the series, Goku ends up having his tail cut off, preventing him from ever going into the giant monkey form. Which I always kind of found it was kind of a loss in terms of unlocking his full power. I don't know, maybe it's just me, I guess. So, Goku goes on to live in the forest, living off the land and eating T-Rexes for breakfast. Oh, and in this fictional future, dinosaurs never went extinct. Cool, huh? I mean, who doesn't like dinosaurs? So apart from having dinosaurs and aliens, there's also a ton of magic. I mean, lots of magic throughout the series. You know, sharing this video would be magical to me. Anyway, this is Goku's life for years until he meets a young woman named Bulma. And Bulma is a scientist. And she's also on a quest to find something called Dragon Balls. Now these are seven mystical artifacts hidden throughout the world. And if someone were to find all seven, the holder would summon the eternal dragon named Shinron. Shinron will then grant a single wish to the bearer of all seven Dragon Balls. Now keep in mind, these aren't monkey paw style wishes. No, 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 no. You see, Shinron is a kind and benevolent dragon. He understands what you're asking and fulfills the wishes as you see it. So if you want the world's most comfortable underwear, well, you're gonna get that. Oh, and no wishing for more wishes. Well, it turns out Goku's father, Gohan, had a Dragon Ball. Well, Goku being so kind, gives Bulma his Dragon Ball and decides to help Bulma on her quest to find the remaining Dragon Balls. And just like that, the series is off and running. Look, I can't say it enough. This is just the very beginning. This franchise just grew and grew into the beast it is today. The ongoing theme in this series is that there's always a new and more powerful threat. Something that Goku has to train and push past perceived limits, forcing himself to become stronger, dedicating himself to the grind of training. For me, it was always kind of an allegory for life. Once you've overcome one challenge, another, even more challenging task rears its head. Hey, don't want to get too philosophical there. Along the series, Goku discovers lifelong friends and enemies, as well as finding the love of his life in the form of Earth's most powerful woman. <laughs> Dragon Ball was the first anime that I learned about something called the power-up trope, with some build-ups taking almost an entire season. But I'm telling you, the build-ups are totally worth it, and the series always delivers an amazing finale. While Dragon Ball is not as over-the-top in terms of fighting and story arc and animation, it does lay a firm foundation of the lore of the entire franchise. And honestly, the show sometimes feels a little bit young, but by the time you hit Dragon Ball Z, the brakes come totally off. Now, I always love talking about power sets and abilities, but it's so hard to nail this one down as the writers were always adding new powers and abilities to Goku. But I just want to touch a little bit on his power level at the end of Dragon Ball. By the end of Dragon Ball, we have an 18-year-old Goku who's not only crazy powerful by any standard, I mean, honestly, he's knocking at the door of, like, Superman levels, really. I'll say it again, this is just the beginning. And while he doesn't have heat vision or ice breath, he does have the ability to fly. Like, one of the very first things you have to accept in the series is that anyone who trains martial arts hardcore, well, they can fly. Just accept that fact. But more than just flying, Goku becomes extremely durable. He can literally withstand the equivalent of a hundred ton TNT blast. Oh, and one of his greatest abilities is to harness his mantra, or chi, or better known in the series as an energy blast. 
which is just a powerful way of focusing your inner energy and making it a projectile, which in this series is a power that few can perform and even less can do it right. But Goku, by the end of Dragon Ball, is a master of chi projectiles. And his go-to blast is the Kamehameha Blast. And I'm here to tell you it is one of the coolest scenes to watch. Yes, this is just how firmly embedded into anime and manga psyche for that matter. So here we have Goku, our hero, as a top tier martial artist, possessing superhuman durability, flight and energy blasts with a heart of pure gold. The kind of hero that you can't stop rooting for because he always does the right thing and never gives up. But he's also probably the biggest goofball and most gullible person in the universe. I mean, without question, he always gives his enemies the benefit of the doubt. And it always ends up biting him in the butt. Honestly, this is his biggest flaw and what gives him the most trouble. He is just not the brightest crayon in the box. But he never, I mean, never gives up. Now this brings us to the end of the briefest of beginnings of the legend of Goku, the baddest man on the planet. So friends, thank you so much for watching. Your support helps this channel tremendously. So if you haven't already, scroll on down, feel free to click any of those buttons below the video and leave a comment. Let me know how I'm doing and I will talk to you again soon.